Uh, this is uh, episode 51A. It is a follow-up to Daniel 2. I'm going to read the notes from Daniel 2. <sighs> the second chapter of Daniel provides a biblical overview of humanity's future and end-time events. Without this chapter, no one can understand Matthew 24, 25, Luke 21, or Mark 13. Um, without this chapter, the book of Revelation is very mysterious. Nebuchadnezzar had an advisory council, and they were comprised of four different groups. The magicians, or scholars, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans were also called wise men. He gathered these men to interpret his troubling dream, unaware that God intended it as a vehicle through which he would reveal his purposes. Nebuchadnezzar is by far the most important pagan king in the entire Bible. Yet he was the, the basest of men. Very um, low quality person. A despot. A despot is someone who rules tyrannically and uh, mercilessly. A despot who stood as a type. Um, he was the archetype, the, uh, the model of the Antichrist because of his wickedness. All men tremble before this king. He trembled, and he, the king, trembled before nobody except he was afraid of his dreams. From this verse to um, Daniel 7, 28, the text changes from Hebrew to Aramaic. The language of the courts and the eventual language of the people. How fitting that God conveyed his message concerning the Gentile kingdoms in a Gentile language. So Nebuchadnezzar could remember his deep terror caused his deep terror that was caused by the dream, but he did not reveal the contents of his dream. Perhaps he could not remember the dream itself, or perhaps he was testing the ability of his magicians. It would not be enough to interpret the dream. One would have to tell the king its contents. On one level, the king's decree that all Babylon's wise men be executed was nothing more than Satan's attempt to rid the world of Daniel. The one who determines not to compromise his or her life usually gets Satan's attention. More importantly, this person also falls under the protective custody of Almighty God. Daniel's actions illustrate how a great leader handles crisis. He spoke with sound counsel and deep wisdom to the authorities and asked the king to give him time so that he and his friends might seek God concerning this secret. Impulsiveness is not of the Lord. Instead, it points to a person who forges ahead, impatient for God's answer. Responsiveness is the mark of one who lets God guide in his time. While the Babylonian wise men sought the answer in the stars, Daniel knew the God who made the stars and the heavens, and through God, the secret was revealed. This is um, shown in num Numbers 12, verse 6, and Proverbs 3, verse 32. Perhaps the Lord let Daniel dream the same dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. True to character, Daniel made certain that Nebuchadnezzar knew the interpretation that the king demanded. Uh, that dream had not come from him, but from God in heaven. God communicated this panoramic prophecy to a pagan king 
because the prophecy concerned the beginning and end of Gentile rule. It should be no surprise that a divine message was communicated through a wicked man. If God can use a donkey to rebuke a money-loving prophet, as he did in Numbers 22, verse 28 through 31, and order a rooster to rebuke a backsliding dis disciple, as he did in Matthew 26, 75, he can speak through a heathen king with a dream.